I switched from riding a more powerful fat tire e-bike to this 37 pound class one for some very specific reasons that I think many can relate to. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why I think class one e-bikes like this Propella 7S make more sense for most riders. And of course, I'm gonna tell you about this sweet bike. Welcome to the first video of my brand new YouTube channel. My name is Logan Moy, and I love talking about all things tech and mobility. As I said today, we're gonna to be talking about class one e-bikes and why I think they're more practical for most riders. We're gonna be featuring the Propella 7S, which I will talk in detail about, but I'm gonna save my experience and thoughts with that bike for the end of the video in case you're interested in buying it. Just to be fully transparent, Propella did send me the 7S at no expense to me so that I can try it out and let them know what I think, but they're not really expecting a video from me and it's definitely not a sponsored post. So you can rest assured that any thoughts I have about the bike are my honest opinions and Propella is gonna be hearing about them for the first time just like you by watching this video. Let's start off by going outside and taking a close look at the 7S just to get a good example of what a class one e-bike entails. All right, here is the Propella 7S. It has an all aluminum alloy frame, making it very light at 37 pounds. It stands at 69 inches tall and about 40 inches long, making it best for riders between five foot four and six foot two. Propella didn't give a weight limit for this bike, but I wouldn't recommend it for riders too much over about 220 pounds. Let's take a tour and see everything that's on this bike. Starting with the battery. The battery is 36 volts. It takes about two and a half hours to charge and has a range of about 20 to 40 miles. It's pretty light at about three and a half pounds and looks like a water bottle, so it slides in a backpack real easily. On the back tire, we have the hub motor. It's a 250 watt motor, which is pretty weak compared to other e-bikes I've ridden, but is more than enough to keep this super light bike moving. Coming over here, we have a Lasso 46T alloy chain ring and a 170 millimeter alloy crank arm. The bike sits on top of CST Expedium tires that are 700C by 35 and puncture resistant. And it has front and rear Shimano TX805 mechanical disc brakes. On the left handlebar, you have your LCD display and your controls with five levels of pedal assist. On the right side, you have your Shimano Atlas seven speed shifter, which gives you all kinds of control for pedal resistance. All in all, it's a pretty good package at $1,299, which is about the same price as a lot of entry-level fat tire e-bikes. With this one, you don't get an accelerator, but there's a lot of other conveniences. The first reason I think you might want to consider a Class 1 e-bike over something larger and more powerful is because it makes for a great transportation device. I really feel like with Class 1 e-bikes, you get the convenience of riding a traditional non-electric bike with the advantages of having that electric motor when you're feeling tired or need that extra help getting up a hill. Because Class 1 e-bikes don't have an accelerator and are limited to about 15 to 20 miles per hour, they typically don't need as powerful of a motor and as large of a battery, which really cuts down on the weight and cost of the bike. You can safely ride a class one e-bike on a designated bike path or even on sidewalks where it's not safe to ride on the street because they're not going to break that speed limit of 20 miles per hour here in California or maybe even less elsewhere. Which brings me to the second reason why you should consider a class one e-bike. They often look like regular bicycles. Now the reason I like that so much is because when you're riding on a bike path or even the sidewalk where it's not safe to ride on the street, you're not gonna get side-eyed by pedestrians or other bicyclists that think you're riding some big old 60 pound fat tire e-bike going 35 miles an hour on the sidewalk where you could potentially kill somebody if you hit them. I also like that they're not gonna attract too much unwanted attention from potential thieves that are on the lookout for big bulky e-bikes that are worth more than a traditional bicycle. What's also great about a more subtle design e-bike is that you can use a lot of regular bike accessories like racks or locks. One of the more annoying aspects of owning a fat tire e-bike or any e-bike with a larger frame is it's really difficult to use a standard U-lock bike lock when you're securing it. Oftentimes either the tires don't fit in a rack or you have to push the frame up against anything you're securing it to, leaving it open to scratching, or you just have to go with a more bulky chain to secure your bike. With a class one e-bike that usually has the same frame as a regular non-electric bike, this thing fits really nicely on any bike rack you'd see out in the city. Uh, and you can easily slide one of those metal coils through the front tire to give it extra security. The third reason why class one e-bikes are so great is because of how lightweight they can be. 
That makes it really ideal for a device that you can just grab and go whenever you need to run an errand or you're looking to just get out and go for a ride really fast. I live in a second floor walk-up apartment and carrying larger, heavier e-bikes up and down those stairs can be a real hassle, which is why I really like having a class one e-bike like the Propella around because at 37 pounds, it's really easy to just pick up and carry. The slimmer profile also makes it really easy to store indoors because it's not gonna take up a lot of space. Or you can even use those storage racks that are meant for regular bicycles where you hang it by the tire on the wall or the ceiling because they're not too heavy where it's gonna pull them out of the anchors. Now the fourth and final reason I think class one e-bikes are worth it is because they make for great devices for riding within groups, particularly those where there's some that are riding non-electric bikes. For example, the primary way I ride electric bikes is going out with my wife for casual rides and she doesn't like to ride electric bikes so I'm always having to worry about going too fast and needing her to catch up. But when I ride a class one bike where I can only go as fast as she can on a sprint, it's really easy for me to match her pace. It makes it feel more like I'm riding with her as opposed to ahead of her. Also here in LA, we have these regular events called Ciclavia where they close off major city streets to allow people to bike or skateboard up and down them. It's a really great community event, but I'm also hesitant to bring bulkier, faster e-bikes to those because again, I don't want people to be fearful that I'm gonna be unsafe or cause some kind of accident. So the lower profile class one e-bikes make for great bikes to ride at community events like that. Now, of course, there's gonna be some downsides when choosing a class one e-bike. The first being no throttle. Now, I didn't think that would be such a huge issue, but when I went out on a longer, I think it was like a 30 mile ride, by the end of it, my knees were feeling pretty sore. I don't have the best knees, and so when I go on long rides like that, they can feel a little tender. And I was really missing that accelerator on the way home when I was at my most sore and just wanted to coast back. Typically, class one e-bikes also have a less powerful motor, which here in LA where it's not super hilly, it wasn't a big issue for me. I felt like it accelerated fast enough and I felt like it got me up those hills easily without me putting in too much effort. But if you live in a hillier area with steep inclines, then maybe a class one e-bike isn't the best option for you. Also with a smaller battery, you should really consider how you plan on riding the bike because if you plan on going on longer 25, 30 plus mile journeys, you might have some trouble making it back. But if power and range isn't a huge factor for you because you're more of a casual rider, I'd say one of the biggest downsides to many class one e-bikes is they're not the most comfortable in many cases. Usually if they're trying to keep the cost and weight down, they sacrifice on things like the suspension system. So riding on bumpy paths or streets can be a real problem. All that being said, depending on the type of rider you are, those might be some worthy trade-offs. If you only commute short to medium distances, like five to 10 miles one way, then the range shouldn't be too much of an issue, especially if you have a place to plug in and charge up at your destination to get you home. I think class one e-bikes are the best for casual riders that are just looking for some outdoor activity on the weekends by riding around the park or on the boardwalk because you can easily transport them in your car if you're driving to your destination to ride around and you probably aren't gonna be going on big 30 mile rides when you do. Bottom line is class one e-bikes are great for those that want the physical activity that comes with riding a traditional bike but also want those advantages of having an electric motor when you're feeling a little tired. All right, now it's time to tell you what I really think about the Propella 7S. For the price at $1,300, it's actually a really good all-around e-bike. And again, I think it really depends on how you plan on riding. The Propella 7S, like many e-bikes, makes a great bicycle alternative, but I wouldn't expect much more than that. You're not gonna be tearing up the streets, going almost as fast as cars like you would on something like a Super 73. But if you just like the leisure activity of biking and maybe you have bad knees or you just want a little extra help getting up hills or accelerating faster, then this is a bike to consider. I keep going back to the weight, but that really is the most compelling reason for owning a bike like this. When I was initially looking for my first e-bike, I was really looking for something that can be a great bike to go run a quick errand on. Not necessarily travel 20 to 30 miles in a single ride, but maybe like two to five miles just going to the store to go grab something and then head back home. The motor is only 250 watts, but like I said earlier in the video, that's more than enough to move a very light bike like this one. I think the design of the frame looks really cool on this bike and I like how subtle it is. It looks like any other typical bike that doesn't have an electric motor and you don't stand out on bike paths like when you pass by other pedestrians like that, they're not going to think twice that it's an electric bike and will just assume you're riding a regular non-electric bike. 
However, if you are looking for more range and power out of a Class 1 e-bike, then you might want to consider the upgraded Propella 9S Pro. It's got a slightly larger battery and a bit of a more powerful motor, and is only a bit more expensive at $1,500. I gotta say, this is not the most comfortable bike though. There's no suspension system, so you really wanna stick to flatter paths and avoid off-roading or really bumpy streets. And like with most bikes, the stock saddle is very uncomfortable and definitely needs an upgrade. If you are considering the Propella 7S, then definitely don't expect it to go much faster than any kind of road cycle. Uh, I think even road cycles can go faster than this electric bike if they're pedaling their hardest, but that's also why it makes for the best device for riding with others, regardless of if they have a motor or not. And since that's the main way I ride e-bikes these days, it's exactly what I'm looking for. So what kinds of electric bikes are you interested in learning more about? Let me know down in the comments so I can plan future videos around those topics. I hope you're gonna join me on this new YouTube journey. If so, please subscribe to the channel. And if you found this video helpful, I'll ask that you give it a nice thumbs up so it can find other interested viewers just like you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.